And the last of our pre-election interviews is with a party that didn't even exist at the last general election way back in 2005. Jim Allister here at that time was a DUP MEP. Now he wants to be a TUV MP. Good evening, Mr. Allister. Good evening. You'd be a very lonely man at Westminster, wouldn't you? Because you're going to be taking a message that no one there wants to hear. As far as they're concerned, Northern Ireland is done and dusted. Well, I don't think I'll be alone because I'm hopeful that I won't be the only TUV MP. But the message we have is a good message and a message that needs to be brought because uh, let's the way, face the way it, to madness says the DUP well, well sorry good uh, and sorry what we've had for three years is a lamentable failing devolution take any issue take the most seminal of all perhaps education in total chaos now who in the right mind could say that the system that we have is working that it's delivering that it's providing good government it's lurched from deadlock to deadlock through months of strike of the executive, through gun to the head politics at Hillsborough till the DUP rolled over on Sinn Féin's latest demand. So it has not delivered at all. And what I am looking for and TUV is looking for is a better way forward, a durable way forward for devolution. I want the people of Northern Ireland to have the same rights as every other citizen in the democratic world. Mm. The right to vote a party out of government the right to yes, have an opposition. But, but, but this and is a, Stormont this is, a is constructed. Westminster election. Stormont People is constructed on the basis that you don't have those rights. No one at Westminster is going to listen to those arguments. Well, sorry, the Prime fine. Minister is going to have to answer why he presides over a part of the United Kingdom where citizens are, the denied the right of the House of no, are denied the right to vote a party out of government and denied the right to have an opposition. <laughs> because when it's an international have, agreement, that's when why. When he can have a, an international agreement that is flawed and failed, failed beyond description, when he can have a far better system, where the system should be simply this. You have an assembly election. No party is big enough on its own to form a government. So there's going to be a coalition. Let all the parties negotiate. Those that can agree the platform that they're going to implement on housing, on education, on health, on all those matters, and if they can command the requisite support for that in the assembly, they form the government. Yeah. Those but, who can't but, but, but form the opposition. But if you were one of those parties, you wouldn't even go into government with one of the parties. I wouldn't go into government with Sinn Féin, but if others go into government with Sinn Féin, if Sinn Féin can persuade others to take them into government and agree what they're going to do about all those issues, then I will be the opposition. But if I can persuade others to go into government with me and agree what to do about education, and health and everything else, then I expect Sinn Féin to be the opposition. And if they're only Democrats, so-called, so long as they're in government, then they're not Democrats at all. Because a Democrat is someone who can perform the function of opposition or government. So what I'm putting forward is a positive, workable, durable system. Not achievable. In place. Not achievable. Look, look at the history is that Why is it not achievable? Unionists vote with unionists, Sorry. nationalists no, vote no. with nationalists. Why is it not achievable that the people of this part of the UK should have the same rights to vote a party out and have an opposition mm. as anyone yeah. else. Why is it not achievable to form a, Everyone co a, wants form a that. coalition The DUP want that. Oh, They're keen on they? voting, no, no. but what no, no. they say the is that this is the power. best achievable Sorry. way forward. Sorry. The, the best no. achievable no. way forward. <laughs> the DUP want par, any par, with anyone. And that's why they were prepared to abandon jettison every principle and commitment they ever made, like the commitment of the last parliamentary election in 2005, that, sh that a mandatory coalition with Sinn Féin was out of the question, abandoned for, uh, for the lure and the lust of power. Mm -hmm. Now, it hasn't worked. We need to face the fact it hasn't worked, and we need to set about oh. re-establishing the but fundamentals there have been that will enable it to work. Say. It is working. Difficulties. There are parties talking together in Parliament, who, in Parliament buildings who were implacable enemies. Yes, Things are, have moved are, forward. What are they delivering? Well, tell that to the people of Newton Hamilton, where the surrogates of the IRA are back at what they do best. Mm. And let's be quite clear, there is a party sitting in government, no, who could snuff out the activities of the dissidents tomorrow, because every dissident was a member of Sinn Féin, IRA. Martin McGuinness IRA. has called them they traitors. What more do you want them to do? I want them to do this. They know the name of every IRA man who ever joined them, equally ever, every IRA man that ever left them, so they could tell you the membership list, list of the dissidents. Why have they not given that to the police? Why are they not helping the police but to solve those crimes? We, we don't know that he's not doing that, of it course. It may suit 
Sinn Féin IRA to have a little arm's length leverage when it's necessary. Well, they would deny that completely. But aren't you giving succor to the men of violence by preaching this gospel of, of instability? Democracy? Instability. No, sorry, I'm pointing out that what we have is not working. It is unstable. It will always be unstable because mandatory coalition will never deliver anything about, but deadlock because the party's in it because they're guaranteed a place forever in government don't have to agree anything. Therefore, it is a, a certain recipe for deadlock. If you want to get progress, if you want to get delivery on education, on health and all those things, you get together a government of those who are agreed on the principles and that. And if that includes Sinn Féin by the fair means of voluntary coalition, then I have to put up with that in opposition. But if they can't persuade others to come into government with them, then if they're Democrats, yeah, but, but, they'll be opposition politicians. But you've also politicians. said that you wouldn't uh, share power with anyone who had a terrorist conviction, for example. So I don't, I don't, I think the so law... So you're not talking think, about Sinn Féin in opposition, you're talking about those people you per approve of in Sinn Féin. No, no, I, I, I would, TUV would not be sharing power ah. with Sinn Féin, period. Ah. I am specifically saying in our manifesto that I believe, out of due deference to all the victims they made, that it should be the law of the land that no one with a terrorist conviction, be it loyalist or Republican or anything else, should ever be able to hold governmental office. And I think that that would be a timely deterrent to those to today look at Sinn Féin IRA, look at McGuinness, look at Jerry Kelly and say, violence worked for them. Mm and say, why wouldn't it work for you us? See, the DUP say, if we'd gone your way, we would have an Ang Irish Language Act, we would uh, have the end of selection and education, we would have lost investment, we would have water charges, and there would be no Republican support for And policing. what have we got? We've got an Irish language strategy about to be unfolded. We got, 20 million, we got 20 million pounds into the Irish language sector uh, through the back door of Hillsborough. We have got non well, What's wrong with supporting the language? Well, because Would you be against language, any support well, for it at all? I, I'm against the politicising of language. And the Irish language well, has been... Giving it money isn't sorry, politicising. Oh, sorry, it's, it's enabling it. It's activating <laughs> it. It's promoting it. It's not politicising. Remembering, it's remembering not that... not politicising. Remembering what well, is, because Sinn Féin said that every syllable of Irish spoken yeah. is another and bullet Jerry Adams said in this program that another it should be depoliticised. in the campaign. Well, he is the very one who has politicised it and drawn that stigma upon it. And, of course, he is the one that made it the price at Hillsborough, in addition to getting his key demand in policing and justice into the terrorist inclusive executive, that he needed a 20 million sweetener on the Irish Language Act. So he is the one who has politicised it. So when the DUP talked, that they have stopped Irish language promotion just to look at the 20 million, just to look at the Irish language strategy that's coming down the track, just to look at the commitments they've made at Hillsborough yet to unfold about expanding. Are you, are you a one bodies. issue and a one man party? I'm certainly not. I have a manifesto which is full of issues national issues, local issues, and everything else. And we have 10 candidates in this election all fighting to win. Jim thank you very much indeed.